So uh, what do you think the first step, if you're looking at starting a business, what's the first step you should do when you're looking at starting a business? Find out if there's a need out there for your business. Mm, that's a good start. Because most people were thinking that, oh, I got a good idea. But if you don't test the need out there, people, don't, people won't buy it. Mm. And um, you have to find a need. And you have to think in the ways of how can I solve a problem? And, and, and that's, the, that's, the number one, that's the number one thing to start a business. Because you're going to have an idea and it can fade right on out. But you want something that's going to be long lasting and um, generational. Then you have to figure out how can I solve a need. Okay. And uh, you, you, did you grow up in Charlottesville? Have you always been in Charlottesville your whole life? I grew up in Charlottesville. I was born in Langley Air Force Base uh, when my father was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And then we moved back to Charlottesville. But I've been all along the East Coast and even outside the country. That's okay. why it's travel. Now, I mean, man, and, and this is awesome because I'm about an hour away from here, but it kind of touches me too. Being from Charlottesville, man, how, do, how does it feel to see UVA win that basketball championship? Oh, man, it, it felt good. Only thing I made sure, because I was watching it, that I had enough heart that my heart wouldn't come up my chest because the whole, almost the whole entire NCAA, they played it right down to the wire. Mm. And we're like, oh my God. Right. But yes, it was nice. It was nice for the area. Um, the area, unfortunately, the area, <clears throat> need, we need more wins like that. So hopefully we erase some of the things that happened in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. or as far as mindset. Right. No, because like I said, I love basketball. I love the game of basketball, man. Seeing that, like I said, made me feel amazing. Now, I've been, I've been coming to Charlottesville growing up for some time. And one of, the, one of the key things I always wanted to do is go to the mall. Even if, even if my family couldn't afford the stuff I wanted, I always wanted to go to the Fashion Square. It was just something about mm -hmm. it. But from what I'm hearing, it's deteriorating, man. You know, they're losing stores. You know, how, what do you think the direction is with, with Fashion Square? Because it's not only Fashion Square. Believe it or not, um, Roanoke, we got a couple of malls in Roanoke has pretty much been decimated. And um, Roanoke and, uh, and strip malls throughout the country has been decimated because more, more people are shopping online. Mm -hmm. And they're getting the deals online. And, and unfortunately, as society get lazier and lazier, um, you'll see stores like the malls and everything else end up becoming warehouses for something else. Because um, the Sears left um, Fashion Square Mall mm -hmm. and some of the big names and stuff like that is having a hard time keeping up. And that goes right back to um, starting a business because you want generational to a point where you always stay ahead of a trend. You're always looking for something next in training. You always grow and keep growing because when no soon you stop growing, that's the day that you die. Yeah, and um, like I said, it's, it's I've been coming for so long, and that's just one thing that I'm trying to get adjusted at mall, just going down here losing stores. So, um, how did you how did you feel, man? Uh, when all the riots and everything was going on in Charlottesville and with the, with the white supremacists and everything, how did that make you feel being that that happened in your city? You believe it or not, <laughs> it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times this, where a lot of times is people attach stuff to them. Um, August the 12th wasn't about African Americans and it wasn't about Hispanics. It was about um, European Americans they cover up so much for so long, and now things are starting to get exposed. And then at the same time, it's embarrassing a lot of other people and from people from their own ethnic group because they thought after the Civil Rights Movement, it was a kumbaya moment. But it wasn't. Only thing it did, everything went underground. Mm -hmm. And now you, you have a, elite, or you have a uh, president that is actually allowing it because it's almost the last dish effort for them in a, in a sense because they know by 2043 that the minority race and you, most likely going to be the Hispanics mm -hmm. are going to outnumber European Americans in the United States. So that's, that's what they're trying to hold on to. Okay. Were you out there when that was going on? When all the cars were hitting um, innocent bystanders and stuff? No, I wasn't. Believe it or not, I was moving my son into Morgan State University the same wow. day. Um, I yeah. took my whole entire family up. We moved him, to move him in in, in uh, Baltimore. So um, no, I, I made sure 
I thank God that that day was we, when we sat there and um, you know, moved him. We came back, yes, we heard about the, some of the tragic stories and stuff like us, but like I said, it wasn't about us. It was about them not coming awake, and now they're awakened to um, some of the stuff they have done to a lot of people. Right, and I, and I want to congratulate uh, your son, and I want to congratulate you for being there with him. I saw he just got his license. And man, that, that's awesome. Like I said, I, I remember that moment, man, like it was yesterday. And you were speaking on how the DMV was taking so long. Do you think it's anything that, we, that the DMV can improve to, yeah. to make the, the, the wait time shorter than it, than it is? Yeah. I talked to the lady up at DMV and, um, about it because at one point in time, we had a DMV on Commonwealth Drive years ago. And um, and then no sooner they built the one on Pan Tops, they closed the one on Commonwealth Drive. So now if they did like um, Richmond have done, have multiple DMVs, mm. then you wouldn't have the wait time. Right. But he, but the young lady was saying is that because DMV makes a lot of money, that money actually goes to other departments in the state. So they don't have a whole lot of money to reinvest back into um, itself. Mm. That makes sense. Like I said, I've been there and done that, and man, uh, when I got my CDLs and that was something, waiting in line. Now, uh, another thing is, uh, like I said, you've been doing transportation. Uh, touch on that, because that's a family business, right? Yeah, um, Carter's Taxi Incorporated, is, my father started it uh, 47 years ago. First it was Veterans Care for about 20 plus years, and then he changed it to a Carter's Taxi. Yes, and um, he passed about two months ago, oh yeah, almost yeah, almost two months ago, and um, yes, that business, his business, um, my great-grandparents, my uncles, um, they all were entrepreneurs, my sister was an entrepreneur, so yeah, it was in that, it was in, it was breaded in, breaded in us that we should be entrepreneurs, and the, one of the things I like about the taxi industry, because everybody's thinking about Uber and Lyft, but and this, is, and this is for a business. This is for business in general. No one company can monopolize everything. No one company can monopolize everything. And, and, and he sat there, my father made a name for himself in Charlottesville um, as far as being dependable and reliable. Okay, okay. Like I said, uh, rest in peace to Mr. Carter. You and you and him, you know, definitely helped me out with a lot of business in town when I was out this way. So I definitely, I definitely respect you both. Um, now, Jesse Matthews, did, did you know him personally? Yeah, yeah, I met Jesse Matthews. Okay. You met Jesse Matthews, and a lot of what happened with Jesse Matthews, um, the university was putting it on the taxi cab industry because okay. he was an orderly at, um, matter of fact, he was orderly at UVA for five years. Wow. Um, it, um, even doing the, um, Morgan, it was not Morgan Harrington, and no Morgan Harrington. He was driving the cab from Yellow Cab at the time, and then with Miss um, Graham, he was he was an orderly at UVA for five years to an extent. So that's how he got in contact with her or touched her. Mm. How do you feel about the whole ordeal with him? I didn't I didn't like it because I was watching. Um, I did quite a few interviews. Um, about it, and I was watching how the university was trying to railroad us, um, the taxi cab industry, and they did, and they did exactly that. And then right along with behind that, Uber and Lyft came right on in. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't like it at all, and I was trying to uh, fight against it. I understand that. I mean, I could. I mean, just looking at it from the outside in, I mean, you can only imagine how it affected how it affected your business and uh, you know your income and everything being that the, the taxi service was kind of tied into that whole thing and uh, like I said do you think he's guilty though do you think he was guilty or not guilty well he was found guilty so I, I would assume that he was guilty mm -hmm. um, but at the same time is that um, taxi cabs throughout the country uh, and throughout the world are safer than an Uber and a Lyft Mm -hmm. on, on, on many avenues, mm -hmm. on many avenues. Um, and that's been proven in the last five to six years because um, the murders, the rapes, and, and uh, molestations and stuff that goes on in the Uber and the Lyft. Um, but 
every taxi cab driver in the country has been registered with either with the state or their locality and also licensed. And if they don't have a criminal background, they can, if, they, if they have a criminal background, they won't drive. So there's not any, anybody can drive. 